Hello and welcome to the Widow's Oil. Today I want to discuss a, a parable that we find, one of Jesus' parables in Matthew 24, where it actually prophesies that it is the Lord himself that comes to bring the vision um, in his house when the people um, are not doing what he says, especially the servants, the leaders, that there will come a division. And I'm focusing here yeah, specifically on the current situation where there is false doctrine, which um, divides um, the body of Christ into so-called um, Jewish uh, messianic believers and so-called Gentile Christians. I'm saying so-called because we should not be using these terms since our Lord already made the two one. We will look at those scriptures yet again about the oneness that he made by breaking down the middle wall of separation. But um, we are told that if there is um, apostasy or heresy, then the natural result will be this division of the household of God. Let's read there the parable of the faithful servant and the evil servant, it says there. I'm reading in the New King James Version here. Yeah? Um, and it says, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now we tend to think of this the way it's preached at the, as that it speaks of individuals. But if you look at the servant as being, for example, a um a whole uh, congregation of people who um, claim to be followers of, of Jesus. And we basically see the leaders as this um, these servants. Then we can see how when this uh, these pastors are not watching and they are being spiritually drunk, we can see that that congregation actually gets cut in two. There comes a division. There comes some false doctrine, which basically brings division. And then that house is cut in two, you see. So this situation where we have this false heresy of um, at the moment in the church where people are making a distinction between different Christians. This is also a situation where we have this cutting in two. So let us look again, what did our Lord say? It says there in Ephesians 2, I've read this scripture many times, but it tells us of the work of Christ. How the oneness works, because if we understand the oneness, we understand the division. Now, there can be many ways where people are separated. They are separated by a heresy. And um, it splits a congregation in two. But with regards to this current heresy, which I believe is going to be the a great apostasy, um, whereby a distinction is made between those who keep the law and those who do not, and there is not unity as Jesus brought. I think that is what it means here um, when he says that he will come and cut them in two. He will cut the congregation in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. 
Jesus often referred to the Pharisees as hypocrites. So what is going to happen um, specifically regarding to this current heresy, it is prophesied here that the Lord, it's the Lord himself who does this. You see? So what happens is because they twist his word, because of how it is written, he has written it in a way that when we twist his words, it destroys us. Um, and what is going to be happening is that that congregation will become Jewish roots or messianic or something like that, where they follow the law, they mix law and grace, and then this is going to happen. You're going to have this two-class system in that co congregation, and then they are a Pharisee, you see. There is even an application that I can see in terms of the Catholic Church, which made a huge distinction between the so-called clergy and the laity, and then they actually um, also abuse their positions of authority. So this is speaking to such a servant where you have this situation. Um, let us look there at that unity. It says there, in Ephesians 2, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, that he might re reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So Jesus came and he, um, he reconciled the tribe of Judah, the Judahites, and the house of Israel that was scattered, who were among the nations. He made them one. And he grafted the scattered remnant back into the olive tree, um, as we read in Romans 11. And then he also allowed the grafting in of um, those that were not Jews, Gentiles, so-called the nations. They were also grafted into this tree. And he made one by not making a distinction anymore between what tribe or nation they came from. In other words, he made the two one in a way where it's not, there is no focus anymore on ethnicity um, or, or the specific culture, but that the oneness is in Christ. So that's very, very important. I've done many videos regarding the importance of this oneness because Jesus warned us that a house divided will fall. So Satan is constantly trying to create division. We read here also in Colossians 3 of this one new man. Um, and he, uh, it says there, Paul tells us there, we must put on the one new man. That means being clothed with Christ. And then it says there, um, in, in this one new man, Christianity as it ought to be, not as it is often abused on earth and where it's imperfect, but the faith that Jesus handed to us in, in that faith and in that understanding, it says where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. So yeah, I want to show you again and say to you that this division that comes, comes because of the people who love the lies that their pastors tell and allow, allow that, tolerate the false prophet, 
spiritually speaking, um, and have leaders that basically are um, are not watching. They are acting as in the days of Noah, marrying, giving in marriage, um, buying and selling, and actually, as it says, eat and drink with the drunkards. Now, spiritually, that means drinking the wine of Babylon, drinking with false prophets, like we see at the moment with a, all the ecumenical movement and this um, whole situation where um, law is being brought and mixed up with Christianity. And this is nothing new because there's nothing new under the sun. In Isaiah 56 from verse 9 to 12, we read the following. All you beasts of the field come to devour. All you beasts in the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yes, they are greedy dogs, which never have enough. They and they are shepherds who cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his own gain from his own territory. Come, one says, I will bring wine and we will fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. Tomorrow will be as today and much more abundant. So this is exactly what Jesus is saying there when he says, they, um, they say, my master is delaying in his coming and he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. You see, so this is exactly that attitude. And that drinking is drinking the wine of Babylon. Yeah, in Jeremiah 51, in verse 7, we read the following. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. And we can see that in our world, how even in the church now, there are pastors that are totally um, into the delusion and that are spiritually drunk. And because of that, because they are not preaching the gospel, um, they are asleep and therefore a cutting in two is going to happen. And it will not be from themselves because they are searching the scriptures and there are strife about, um, about understandings as it normally happens because normally there is heresies because there is a searching of the scripture. But now in this time we see that a majority have very foolish doctrines and that they are not watching like the Lord told us and that they are actually abusing their positions like it says here, it's for their own profit. Everyone for his own gain from his own territory. So there's no unity because everybody is worried about his denomination or his specific church or group and um, and has no understanding. They are ignorant and called dumb dogs. That word there where he says he will cut him in two or cut him is asunder. This word actually means to bisect. It's like the story in 1 Kings 3 where Solomon said to divide the child. So this is what I'm seeing with this doctrine of making a distinction between the Christians and the, and the physical house of Israel and basing prophecy on, on that rather than focusing on Christ. We should focus on Christ and our prophecy should focus on Christ and we should avoid um, looking to carnal earthly doctrines regarding the earthly kingdom. We should be focusing on the kingdom of heaven and 
um, seeking the kingdom of heaven. And if we do that, then the peace of Christ will manifest on earth. But it's very interesting how it was the master himself that then come and cut into. And if you read Matthew 25, it's all about the division that comes, the division of the nations. You've got the division of the wise and foolish servants where they are divided. The foolish virgins didn't have oil for their lamps. And then you've got this um, reckoning that comes with the servants and their talents, where the one who, who put his talent in the ground, the Lord cast him out. And then you've got the judgment of the nations where the Lord um, separates between sheep and goats. So you've again got this division. So yeah, in Matthew 25, he says to the sheep, I was a stranger and you took me in. You see, they receive Jesus because they can hear his voice spiritually. So they, they take him in. Whereas those that are goats, they do not receive him. And therefore they turn to works as a form of salvation and godliness. They are not able to receive Christ and his spiritual um, words and so therefore a spiritual division comes among those who are able to receive Christ and those who are not Christianity is going to be cut in two it's going to be divided it's going to be a long process I believe but that is what's, what is being done. Satan is being allowed to do it because the Lord is allowing him because of the apostasy. It's just the natural process how it works.